Hi, my name is Mark Hambly, and this is Dave Marinelli of Shepley's. In this video, we are going to demonstrate proper installation of an Anderson A-Series double-hung unit. We will be using Anderson Windows manufacturer's installation instructions, as well as showing you how to high performance your install. But before we get started, here are my five keys to a proper install. Step number one, selecting sill pan options. Using a self-sealing flexible pan, DuPont, or tight power work well. Step number two, shimming procedures. Under each jam leg and at side jam locations. Step number three, sealing procedures. Sealing the inside edge of each corner and with a quarter inch sealant bead, apply a quarter inch in and around the outside rough opening on sides and top only. Step number four, applying flashing using Vicor. Install over flanges, but do not wrap it onto the unit. And step number five, low expansion foam procedures. Applying foam one and a half inches in and around all sides. Do not completely fill void at sill to allow for drainage. And remembering fiberglass insulation is not to be used. And to high performance your install, by using pure black spray foam insulation at the back sides of each corner. Okay, so we're gonna uh, start the install now and I'm gonna start by cutting the uh, Type R house wrap back. And this is done a little bit differently. You're gonna find it in the install installation instructions. That's a little different than uh, what's commonly done in the field. So I'll show you that procedure right now. And basically we're gonna start at the top, find your corner cut along the top and then at the middle try to keep it as straight as possible no big deal all the way down to the sill and then once you get at the sill then you're going to cut it back to each side And the only other thing we have to do is we got to cut 45 corners here. As you're following the drainage plan, and this is going to be, we'll fold this back, and this will be your last line of defense at the end. So that's the cut on the, uh, on the house wraps now. Okay, so we've cut the house wrap back. Now we're wrapping it to the inside of the rough opening and I'm just going to staple this off and you'll be able to see the difference between this cut and the, uh, the cut that uh, primarily used in the field. This is a new way of cutting house wrap back that's the way Anderson recommends it. And um, now we'll start with the uh, sill, applying the sill pan. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the sill pan. There's obviously a number of different options out there. And I know guys in the field are using flex pans, they're using lead, some guys are using copper. Um, it's really up to you. It makes no difference what type of pan you're using. Um, Today we're gonna we're gonna use a flex pan because I um, I feel as though this is probably one of the easier pans to use and it's also in the um, Anderson installation instructions that's what they recommend so we're gonna use a Dupont flex and we're gonna bring it right to the back edge and I've already got it started and you just wonder when you're applying this this stuff is super flexible and when you get it to the corners you just want to make sure that you're make sure it's nice and tight and I go about six to eight inches up on the sides this might be a little bit more than that and then when you get to the outer edge you're just gonna fold this around into place like so and you can see how easily that stuff molds right to the corner and it's nice and tight there 
Now obviously I'm in a controlled environment doing this. So when you're in the field and you get colder temperatures, this stuff you want to make sure that you're, you know, that you've got in a place where it's a little bit warmer. You can use a heat gun on it. That will certainly help, you know, keeping it flexible. And again, stretch this corner right out. Fold it right down. And if you get any bumps or whatever, you can just, it'll pull right out. You can use a roller. And you can see how that just folds right into place. So that's nice and tight. So now we've got the pan in. Now we're, gonna, we're just going to check for uh, the rough opening, make sure the rough opening is nice, plumb, level, and square. And then we'll start installing the window. Okay, before we start the installation of the double hung, after you take the window out of the box, you're going to want to lay it flat, um, exterior side down, because you're going to need to do a caulking procedure uh, behind the back side of the flange in the corners. Okay, you'll see the corner pad, and you just want to do a nice bead up and around. That helps seal that corner, and you're going to want to do it to the other three as well which I've already done, and the next procedure after that, like I said, we're, we've, we're already plumb level and square. We've got our level. We've got our shims ready. We talked about, uh, you know, where those shims need to be placed, and I'll go into that a little, bit, a little bit later as we get into the window install. The next thing we want to do is a quarter-inch bead along the top. Go nice and heavy. Don't worry about doing too much. You can never have enough. As a good friend of mine told me. Too much caulking, not a problem. Okay, all the way down to the bottom there. And then we're going to start the other side. And that's it, okay? And you can see how the uh, type bar on the top is folded up and we get ready to put the unit in. And once I get going on the flashing detail on that, you'll see how that all comes into play. Okay, so we've caulked the corner of the unit around the, around the flanges and we did the caulking procedure around the rough opening. So now we're ready to install the unit. Obviously the key here is centering the unit up with inside the rough opening and making sure that the unit is shimmed up off the sill using your shims like we talked about. And you can see how that caulking squeezes out right in around the flange. That makes a nice tight water barrier. Okay, Dave, how are we looking centered up there? That way up top? Okay. I'm going to use a uh, level to make sure we check for level here. We know the sill is level. Okay. So that's going to go that way just a smidgen, just like so. Okay. You good there, Dave? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to Tack the corners, or tack the corner, I should say, and get that secured. And then we can just check again. That's beautiful, nice and walls a little out because of where we're sitting on the concrete. But you're you're right now you are plumb and you'll level at the sill. And what we're gonna do next is, before we start nailing this off, we're gonna do a shimming procedure on the inside. And then once we do that, we can come back out and fasten the window. 
Okay, so we have the unit fastened off to the outside, just tacked in. Now we're going to do a shimming procedure on the inside before we fasten the window off completely. Um, we're a level plumb, and what I'm going to be using here is I'm going to be using these black plastic shims, okay? And we actually used them on the bottom underneath the jam legs as well. And these are pretty neat because what that allows you to do is it allows you to keep, unlike cedar shims where um, you know they're kind of you know they they create a wedge when you're shimming. A lot of guys will just put the shim in, they'll wedge the unit so it kind of tweaks the jam. With these, it keeps the jam nice and straight. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the top. I'm just going to insert these plastic shims right like so. And what what that's doing is it it's going to allow you to set your reveal on your jam with your sash. Okay. Now this this system is a non-compression jam system. And what I mean by that is if you're used to the 400 series tilt wash, the jam was always making solid contact with the sash. This is a non-compression jam system where you're solely relying on the weather stripping on the jam as your point of contact with the sash for weather stripping, for tightness. So it's very important that when you're shimming this, the A-series out, that you shim according to the detail and make sure that your, your reveals here on the edges are staying consistent and tight. Okay? These orange spacers are not just part of the shipping block, and it also spaces the window, the jams, so they don't, so you don't get a um, a boat effect or an hourglass effect. It it kind of stabilizes it, but what it also does is it keeps the spacing when you're doing your shimming. It keeps it nice and straight, and you can see that it's nice and consistent from top to bottom. Okay, so that is important. That's a very important step that needs to get done. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to secure the window on the outside. Okay, so we're going to finish fastening off the unit. I've already started going around the other side with them. Just a couple more nails here into this and then we're going to start applying the uh, Vicor on the sides and the uh, head drip cap. Okay, we finished securing the window. Now we're going to apply the Vicor over the flanges. I'm going to start it with this side right here. And again, we're going to be using Vicor over the flanges. We're not wrapping it onto the unit. We're just butting it right up. And again, the Vicor in the field, you know, this time of year in the winter months, it's really, really important that you keep this in a relatively warm spot before you apply it. It's going to work better for you. We'll do the other side. There's a couple different brands of flashing tape. Vicor is one of the, I don't know, one of the favorites out there that guys like using. There's also Typar flashing. And DuPont actually makes a flashing tape as well. Whatever preference you like. I've always liked this. A lot of guys in the field like this. It sticks well. Okay, so we get the two sides on. We're not going to put any tape on the bottom. We're going to leave that open because our install is, um, we're not using the barrier method. We're using the drain method, okay, on this one. So our next step is we're going to uh, add the drip cap, okay, to the uh, top of the unit. And before we put the drip cap on, we're going to run a bead of um, silicone 
along the inside edge of that and then we're going to embed the drip cap into that and then we'll fasten it off and then apply our head uh, flashing on top of that. So. Again, the drip cap is part of the installation of the unit and it really needs to be applied. These units are tested at the factory with this install, with this installation method, okay? So this really has to get done. A lot of times you'll, a lot of times I'll see where guys just, you know, they, they don't use them. So it's important that you use that. And we're just going to fasten it off with a couple of, a couple of finish nails, I mean a, a couple of uh, roof nails. Secure it. Okay, now you get that secured, and now you're going to apply your head flashing. Just rest it right over the top, like so. And you can see that's how that creates a nice tight barrier in the water plane for this. The water will shed off of that. And then your, your last line of defense would be pulling that down. But before we go there, and before we apply the exterior trim, a bead of caulking needs to be applied between, you know, right over the, right over the edge of the Vicor and lapping it onto the unit. And so we'll do that right now. Go down the sides, nice bead. And basically you're just sealing, you're sealing that joint between the Vicor and the unit. Adds another barrier. Okay. And then I'll go on the top here. Just seal on that. And then the one other place is underneath the flange, just getting that area. So that flange is sealed to the unit. Okay? And then you can just tool it. And so now you've created a nice tight barrier. And the last, last line of defense, like I was talking to you before, is this, this piece of house wrap goes down over the drip cap. And then we'll just take some uh, type hard tape and we'll just seal those corners. Okay, so now I've got the flashing done. I've pulled the house wrap back over that top piece of flashing, and I'm just going to secure that with a piece of Tipar tape into the corner, just making sure this thing is laying flat and it's not flapping in the breeze until you get ready to uh, install your uh, exterior trim. Okay, so the unit is secured on the outside. We get the flashing detail done. The exterior trim is put on. Now we're going to jump back to the inside, and I just want to I want to point out these uh, plastic clips that we were using, the, uh, the shim clips. And if you notice on here, these little tabs, it's a pretty neat little system where if you just score them, they just break right off, okay? Um, some guys like them a little bit better than, than cedar shims. It takes a little bit more work, and you can get them to the point where they just they get kind of snap right off. So it's a good little system on that. And one of the other things I was 
talking about earlier is how to high performance this unit. Okay, and one of the things that a lot of guys are starting to use in the field now is a product called Pure Black. Now, Pure Black is a, a spray foam, and it's primarily used in the field with irrigation systems for sealing underground black pipe. And we're going to use it in this application where we're going to get to the backside corner of the flanges, and we're just going to in, we're going to inject that spray foam right there, and that's going to seal up any type of water or air infiltration that may be in that area, okay? It just, again, just high performance in that area, and we'll start that right now. Now again, we sell this. You can get it right at Shepley's. Um, I've got a quarter inch tube attachment that's on the end of this just so I can get inside the cavity because we're working with a two by six wall. And again, just right in that corner. And then we'll go to the top. Right to the back side of the flange, you can feel it with the hose. Just go up and around, the rough opening a little bit. And that'll seal that corner. And then again, on the other top corner, just poke it, you can feel the flange right there. And this adds a nice, Nice high performance to your install, especially with jobs that are right on the water, where you're really, you're really looking for something to beef up the unit with the install. And you can see stats starting to spray out there right now. Okay, so we finished up the corners with the pure black. Now we're going to go around the inside perimeter of the window and use the uh, window foam insulation. Okay, primarily. Uh, Insulators are going to do this procedure, not necessarily the builder, but you want to be careful because you want to make sure that this procedure, when it gets done, is done completely tight. In other words, because I've been to a lot of jobs where I'll see a break in the foam where it's not quite making contact with the window, and so you're not getting that, you're not sealing off the window the way it should, okay? To, you know, for the, we talked about that negative pressure, okay? So we want to make sure that we go in inch and a half or so, not filling the whole cavity, just an inch and a half and foaming completely around the unit. And like I talked about at the sill, you don't want to you don't want to sill that whole void. You just want to go an inch and a half in as well, okay? And then making sure that we get in front of the uh, shims as well, okay? So I'm going to start in this corner right here. And I got the nozzle in about an inch and a half or so. And you can see it, you can feel it. And this stuff is a low expansion. And you can see where the shim is right there. You just kind of go up and around that. And then make sure you're back in about an inch and a half or so. And you're just going to follow it all the way around, just making sure that it's nice and tight. Okay, and you hit the shim, go up and around that. And then you can hit another shim, seal that right in. And down the bottom here, as we get to the bottom, you can see the squeeze of the pure black, which is no big deal. And then just go in front of this shim right here, and then back into the bottom. The other reason for the shims, shimming up off the, the sill framing is so that you don't get any crowning going on in your sill. If you've got some settling going on in the house, it could cause could cause the uh, the framing to change dimension and, and kind of settle. And what I mean by that is, if everything starts to settle, and you have this unit right on the framing, the window frame is going to go right with the right with the settling. But if it's like it, like it's shimmed up on each side, if this starts to settle, you're not going to, more likely, you're not going to get a crowning effect in here because you have that spacing, okay? So it's very important to make sure that that gets shimmed up. And also the, uh, 
the foaming procedure. You need to make sure that you have spacing, you know, for what I'm doing here. If your rough opening is not correct and you don't have the proper, you know, the, the unit's not aligned properly within the opening. We talked about keeping the window centered up in the opening. If it's shifted over to one side and you don't have, you know, proper gap or spacing, you're not going to get proper insulation. Okay. Okay, now that we're all set with the installation of the Anderson A-Series double hung unit, I just want to review the steps. Step number one, selecting a, a sill pan option. As you can see, we use the DuPont Flex Wrap. Works really well, nice and flexible. The only thing you got to pay attention to is, you know, colder temperatures, making sure that you keep that in a, in a warmer environment before you get ready to use it. You can use a heat gun on it to you know, make sure that thing lays nice and flat. It's a real good option for this type of install. You can use metal pans or plastic pans for that matter. Um, I find that you know, this, this type of option that probably works best with most of the guys in the field. Uh, step two, shimming procedures. Just making sure that you're getting those shims underneath each leg of the jams is really important. You know, if those things are too far into the middle of the window, you could have bowing occur at your sill. Okay, so you want to make sure those things are right to the outside edge, right directly underneath those jam legs. And strategically shimming on the inside, for what we talked about earlier with the non-compression jam system that we have with the A-Series, okay? St strategically shimming in those locations is critical to making sure not only for uh, proper installation, but you know, making sure that the operation of the window is working well, okay? And step number three, sealing procedures. You know, sealing the edge of the corners of the unit, okay, around, you know, around the back side of those corners, as well as you know, that perimeter seal, okay, around the rough opening. I gotta be honest with you, a lot of guys in the field are skipping this step. Um, this really needs to get done. It's part of the installation. It's part of how the unit is tested, so it really needs to get done. Step number four, applying flashing using Vicor. And again, we, we talked about Vicor. We talked about maybe Typar, you know, Typar uh, flashings, uh, DuPont flashings, whatever you're comfortable with. That's super important to make sure that those flanges are covered with that uh, Vicor and that caulking procedure around that perimeter as well, okay? Um, step number five, low expansion foam procedures, okay? We're showing the low expansion foam in and around the inside portion of that unit, okay? It's really super important. I can't tell you how many job sites I go to, and I see the foam there, but I also see gaps. I see break in the, in the foam, okay, in that foam application. In order to create a tight window, okay, where you're not getting, where you're not getting uh, that, uh, that negative pressure drawer, Okay, that needs to be tight. And just be careful that you're not filling the, in, that whole void of the sill because we need to make sure that we're leaving a plane for drainage. Okay? And then the high performance the, you know, that we showed you, you know, we're injecting pure black spray foam into the corners of, you know, backside corners of each flange will give you a high performance on your unit. And a lot of guys are starting to use the procedure now. So I hope this helped you with your install. And if you have any questions about this video and the content of it, please feel free to call Shepley Wood Product Service Department at 508-862-6219.